you guys haven't noticed out there, it is very much winter time here in the Northern Hemisphere, but spring is on the way. And I can tell you from experience, those first couple of bike rides in the spring, they hurt mentally and physically. Getting those gears turning, it's hard work. So to take the edge off just a little bit, we're gonna go inside today. We're gonna meet up with Katrina Strand, one of Whistler's most acclaimed mountain bike racers and coaches. She's got a lot of information to share, so I'm pretty stoked. It's time to get primed. I'm Katrina Strand and I've been mountain biking, training and coaching for years now. I own a business called Strand Training and Strand Training is broken into two different businesses essentially. I've got a training business that focuses on performance training and pre-postnatal and I have a mountain bike coaching business and there's a lot of overlap between the two. I've brought in some movement patterns that I believe are important for mountain biking, um, but at the same time apply overall strength. And then we're gonna finish off with some, some stretches, some more mobility that is really important for the mountain biker, the common places that get tight. So our first exercise, we've already gone over this movement pattern, so it's gonna be an easy one to understand, is our squats again. And of course, if you're really working on that squat movement pattern, you don't need to add weight. But we have got our handy dandy milk jug to add weight. You can fill it up with water, you can fill it up with sand, crystals. Rice. Uh, rocks, rice. Yeah. Hey, that's a good one. Hey, yeah, you can just use the milk. <laughs> Anything you want. So what you're going to do with this, Christina, is you're going to front load it, which means you're going to hold it right against your chest. Exactly. This actually will take the pressure out of your biceps holding something out here. And then like give a little, yeah, exactly. So bring it in. Now come into your squat stance. Remember that is shoulder width apart. Awesome. And come down into your squat. We've already discussed how this movement pattern works. Awesome, and come back up. And think about an account of one 1,000 to 1,000, and keep going. That looks awesome. Awesome, so if you wanna make this harder, you're more than welcome to do one of two things. You can either press overhead as you come up, making sure that you're not flaring through the ribs, so you do need to have quite a, a good core connection to the transverse abdominis, that's the lower abs. Yeah, and push it. Push it up as you're coming up, not after you get up. Awesome. For those that don't have weight at home or want to make it harder, another way is to come down, halfway up, back down, and up again. Yeah, so you're getting a little pulse in there. It's just like an extra little micro squat within the squat. Our next exercise, we're doing a glute raise, and there's all these variations to make it hard to really hard. <laughs> So we'll start on the mat, on our back, with your knees bent and almost touching your heels. This will vary from person to person. You might be a little bit further away or a little bit closer. Hands down for support. First one we're gonna try is lifting up our hips. You wanna make sure that you're not going up so high that you jam that lower back. So you might have to soften a little bit. Keep them here. Hips are always gonna point ASIS, these pointy, pointy bony parts pointing to the sky. Keep them there, hips stable. You're gonna march knees towards your chest. You don't need to do a big yank in. It's just lifting them up and off and you're gonna feel, you can even touch your glute and feel it working. You'll feel this in your hamstrings too. Option one, option two, you can do the same thing with your hands on your chest. Yeah, that makes it harder. And if that is ridiculously easy for you, Come into a single leg glute raise. So quads, thighs parallel, and you're just gonna lift and lower with one side only. So now I'm lifting up and I'll feel that glute activate. And again, you can do the same thing by making it a bit harder. So coming onto your couch, a chair, uh, maybe even have one of these benches in your house. <laughs> Anything that's around this height, so you're at 90 degrees here. You're gonna do the same thing, but now with your heels raised. So coming up, again, not so high that you jam the lower back and working through those marches, bringing your hands here or 
Single leg lift and lowers. Make it even harder. So those are your variations. Four variations to work through. Well, more, eight, because of the hands. So the next um, exercise, plank to, high plank to low plank, I call it. So what you're going to do is set yourself up in a high plank. Remember, your neck is a part of the party. So your neck has to be in line with your thoracic, that's your upper back, down into your lower back. So you want to be like caving here, or caving in your lower back. We're all one unit from here. And you might decide that this is more comfortable for you. It's up to you. From here, you're going to come down onto your elbows and push back up. So let's start with the Bulgarian split squat. This is an awesome glute exercise. So what you're going to do is find something in your house, couch. Um, it can be lower than this. Higher could get difficult, but it can definitely be lower than this bench here. And you're going to place the top of your foot on the bench. Some people prefer doing it this way. I like this way. As far as how far apart you are, where you'll find that place. Some people will be further apart than others. And back is gonna stay straight, as in not rounding. And you're gonna descend down to the ground, hovering that rear knee over the ground. This knee shouldn't be going over your toe, but notice I'm kind of hinged forward. That's gonna allow me to push off my glute. If you stay really upright, you could feel jamming in your lower back. Also, it's harder on your quad hip flexor stretch, and then you're using a lot more quad to lift yourself up. How do we make it harder? The handy dandy milk jug. Front load it. If you're really adventurous, you can overhead load it. Yeah, that makes it a lot harder. So the exercise that I have combined with this is a part of an exercise called the Turkish get up. You're going to bring yourself into a half lunge position. Um, I'm going to line up. See how I've opened up my hips here? Exactly. So you don't want to be back here. You want to swing that leg forward. As far as where this heel goes, it's like mid calf. And then you're going to bring your arm up. This arm stays straight and pointed to the ceiling at all times. So you're going to come down, shift your hips back. You're going to come down and place your hand forward from your knee. And now I'm kind of like in a cross position. Looking up at your hand, just to make sure that it hasn't gone here or there, or it's staying straight up. To get back up, I'm gonna shift my hips back and lift from my obliques only. So not pushing off this hand. So again, shift hips back, eye on the hand. And now they're back, so I can lift my hips or lift myself back up to standing. So the milk jug row, you're going to hinge at your hips much like you have been what, like what you've learned, I should say. I would recommend coming to a split stance as if you're on your pedals. This is a really hard position for some people to actually come into. So if you're not able to get your feet forward and soft through both knees, come into this position with your feet right underneath you. So I'll start here. Back is flat. I'm at around 45 degrees. I'm gonna bring my jug to one side. And I'm gonna use my shoulder blade to pull up and connect to my spine. All right, the, the body saws. Variations here. I'll come into a full plank on my elbows. And notice with my plank that my neck, back, and sacrum, lower back, are aligned. So I'm not reaching down here, caving anywhere. I'm all in one line. So you're gonna hold this, and from here, just simply move back and forth. This makes it a little bit harder. The way to make this easier, you can put your knees down um, and then and saw back and forth. And to make it harder, putting a sheet or a face cloth or something underneath your feet, and then you can slide a lot more. This surface here is like way too grippy for that. But at home, if you have like hardwood or tiles, it's like you'll, you'll get a lot more moving out of it. Thank you guys so much for joining us in the gym today and huge shout out to Katrina for all of her time and her expertise in the subject. I learned a lot, definitely got a little bit sweaty. Hope you guys got some tips out there too. And honestly, it's not realistic to think that we can just ride every single day, throw ourselves down the mountains and have a strong body. So take care of yourself. Do the work now so you can get Cindy during the summer. And if you like the video, please let me know because I'd like to do more like this only if you want to watch them though.